Gold Yule, or Merry Christmas. Today we will begin our four-part special over a Scandinavian-inspired Christmas. So welcome to my home and come on in. There are so many wonderful Scandinavian Christmas traditions that make Christmas time so fun and festive. This year, I decided to create a Scandinavian-inspired Christmas and learn about some Scandinavian Christmas traditions. For instance, did you know that Christmas in Sweden begins with St. Lucia Day on December 13th? Lucia was a 3rd century martyr who brought food to persecuted Christians in hiding. Usually, the oldest girl in a family portrays St. Lucia, putting on a white robe in the morning and wearing a crown of candles or some safer substitute. She serves her parents coffee or mulled wine called glug and breakfast buns. Christmas trees are set up usually a few days before Christmas, sometimes decorated with flowers. Christmas dinner is a must in Scandinavian countries. In Sweden, one would go to church services on Christmas Eve, return home to a smorgasbord, including Swedish meatballs and a visit from the Tomten or Yultomten. In our four part series over a Scandinavian inspired Christmas, we're going to show you how to cook up some delicious Christmas scallops, Jan Hagel Danish Christmas cookies. Swedish meatballs, a delicious cucumber salad, Swedish porridge, gingerbread cookies, glug, which is mulled wine, and rosettes. We're also going to show you how to make some fun and festive crafts like a yultomte and a Scandinavian star ornament. In addition, we're also going to show you how to make some different and fun ornaments for your Scandinavian inspired Christmas tree and we'll end it with a beautiful tablescape for your Christmas dinner party Scandinavian style. All on the next Happy Cooking with Yvonne Douglas. So stay tuned. It's a Scandinavian inspired Christmas. my Christmas scallops and what you'll need are some frozen scallops, mushrooms, butter, heavy whipping cream. I have some Progresso Italian breadcrumbs mixed with some uh, grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. This cheese here, oh my gosh, it's so good. I could just eat it by itself. It's so good. And you'll also need a couple of shallots mixed with a little bit of white onion and some flour and I'll show you how to put it all together, so stay tuned. Okay, so what you wanna do is get a skillet and you want to get some uh, dry vermouth and you're going to poach your scallops in there for approximately um, about 40 seconds or so. 
And so you're going to get your scallops and place them in the vermouth. Now one thing I did do with my scallops, they were pretty thick, so I kind of cut them in half also. And you want to poach them for, like I said, about 30 to 40 seconds. And then you want to take them out of the pan. And you will be needing the vermouth for your sauce. So hold on to that. Okay, so next what I want to do is I want to get some butter. And I'm going to melt it in my saucepan. And then I'm going to add my sh uh, shallots and white onion to it. So I'm melting up my butter. This is actually um, four tablespoons of butter that I just put in there. Next, we want to add our, um, this is two shallots and probably about a fourth of a cup of white onion. And what we want to do is make sure that we cook our white onion till it's translucent and our shallots, of course. I like to add a little bit of pepper to my um, onions while they're cooking. Mm, it smells so good. I just love the smell of onions. Onions and butter and pepper, mm, so good. All right, so I'm gonna let that cook until the onions are translucent. My onions are looking really good and they smell fantastic, oh, so good. All right, so now I'm going to add my uh, mushrooms to it. Give it a good stir and then you want to just season it with a little salt and pepper give it another good stir put a lid on it reduce the heat and then you want to cook it for probably about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes and I'm going to remove my lid and give my mushrooms a quick little stir. Mmm, smells so good. Now what I want to do is I want to add my flour. I'm going to add my flour. This is a fourth of a cup of flour to it. And Give it a good stir. After your uh, flour and your butter combines and it makes a almost like a paste, you're going to add your the dry vermouth that you poach the scallops in. And you want to do a little bit at a time. So I'm gonna get my whisk here, kind of whisk it in. Now I am uh, going to stir it with a uh, wooden spoon and I'm going to uh, watch for the consistency. I want it to be kind of thick. Mm, it's looking really, really good. Hmm. Yep, so you can see how it's becoming like a really thick sauce, almost like where it's coating the spoon. Okay, now what we wanna do is we're going to add 
some more butter. This is about two more tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna turn off my heat, melt that butter into my sauce. And now we're going to add something really naughty, <laughs> which is we're gonna add two cups of heavy whipping cream. After all, it is Christmas time. I'm gonna give that a good stir. Mm. Now we're gonna put that aside, let that cool down, and then we're gonna add our scallops to it. So stay tuned. Okay, so what I wanna do is I want to, there's my oven. Now the oven is preheated to 375 degrees because you're going to uh, cook this for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. All right, so what I wanna do is get my scallops. Now I, I separated my sauce into these two bowls. These have cooled down the, um, the sauce has cooled down, and you want to add your scallops, so I'm going to take probably half. Now this is for two, so of course if you're making more, you want to um, really make sure that you uh, separate your scallops, and you probably need to cook more if you have a family of four, but this is going to make two healthy servings. We're going to be placing them in gratin dishes, and uh, so I'm just going to kind of fold that in with my spoon here. Mmm, this is really, looks really, really good. And then I'm gonna get some butter, and I'm going to just butter my gratin dishes, just like this. This is butter that's at room temperature, so you wanna butter the sides and round your gratin dishes. Okay. All right, make sure it's nicely buttered. And then we're going to put our scallop dish in our gratin dishes. Mm, yum. You don't want to fill it too high because if you do, it might kind of bake over, or cook over, I should say. So let's get this other one here. Very nice, looks good. Now what we want to do is get our uh, Italian breadcrumbs with our Parmigiano Reggiano, and we're gonna top it with that because it's gonna give it a really, really nice crispy top. And then, Put it on a baking sheet just in case it kind of it happens to spill over just a little bit I hopefully it won't but we're going to bake it or put it in the oven at 375 degrees for approximately 15 20 minutes so stay tuned well I just took them out of the oven and it's been approximately 20 minutes and all I have to say is yum Well, now we're going to make a Scandinavian favorite. It's called Jan Hagel. It's actually a uh, Danish cookie, and these are so delectable. They're just gonna melt into your mouth. Now, let me tell you your ingredients, which you're gonna need today. So you're going to need one cup of sugar. Uh, you're gonna need two cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of salt, you're going to need one cup of butter, so that's two sticks, and you will also need one egg, but you're going to separate the egg, and you'll need uh, one cup of sliced almonds. 
and this is really doesn't have a lot of ingredients and it's so good easy to make so stay tuned okay so let's get started on our dough first of all you're going to need a blender I have this kitchen aid uh, heavy duty I will just love my kitchen aid you're going to place your two cups of flour in a big bowl you're going to place oh got a little bit more flour to go make sure you get all that flour you're gonna put one cup of sugar you're going to put one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I love, mm, I love the way cinnamon smells. And half a teaspoon of salt. You're also going to place your butter in here. Your butter really should be uh, room temperature, so keep that in mind. So I got my one cup of butter, and then I want my egg. Now your egg, you need to separate it. You gotta separate your yolk and your egg white. So the way I do it, I just do it the way my mom used to do it, which is just putting it in her hands. And remember when you, um, every time you bake or you cook, make sure you always wash your hands. And that's it. I'm just gonna separate my yolk from the egg white. Run it through my fingers a little bit. And then I'm gonna add the egg yolk to my uh, mixture here. And I'm going to put the egg whites aside. When we come back, we're going to mix it up, so stay tuned. Now I'm mixing this uh, at a low speed, <clears throat> and you want to do this until it's very well blended, so probably about two to three minutes. Now every once in a while you do want to scrape the sides. So let me take a look at this. Get my good old wooden spoon, uh, spoon here. looking really good. Okay, I'm going to continue for another, probably another minute or so. You want to grab a wooden board, make sure that's handy because you'll be taking out the dough and separating it. All right, so this is really coming together and it's pretty much done. All right, awesome. Wow. Take that out, put my dough on this wooden board here. All right, and I'm just gonna kind of press it together. Very nice, this looks really, really good. I'm going to separate mine now. So let me show you up close. So basically you're pressing down your dough. And remember, you need it to be around 1 16th of an inch thick. Now what I wanna do is make sure that it's pretty much all even. So I'm just kinda of going back over it with my fingers. And this is such a nice Christmas cookie. It's made at the holiday times in Scandinavia. And it's so yummy, it just melts in your mouth. You're just gonna love it. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. All right, so I'm pretty much done. Now what you wanna do with your egg white, you're just gonna beat it with a fork, and this is the way my mom used to show me. So you just get your egg white and beat it with a fork. And then I'm gonna get a whisk and really whisk it up until it's kind of foamy like that. Can you see how foamy? All right. So I'm just gonna brush it with that egg white. It's gonna look so pretty when it's done too. Put the almonds on it. Okay, I'm gonna leave a little bit to the side and then 
I'm going to sprinkle it with the almonds. You want to make sure that it's nicely coated and evenly dispersed. There we go. Oh, that looks so good. Wow. All right. Jan Hoggle, everybody. Jan Hoggle. Okay. And then you're going to put it in the oven. It's at 350 degrees, and you're going to bake it for approximately 12 to 15 minutes. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're back. So I'm going to check if the Jan Hoggle is done. It's been approximately 15 minutes. And yeah, it looks like it's done. So you definitely want it to be like a golden brown color, all right? All right, so let's take this out. Oh, wow, look at that, that looks so good. Can you see that? It looks so yummy, golden brown, yum. And what you wanna do right away is you wanna cut them into two inch squares and put them on a cooling rack like this. And so let me get my knife here. I'm going to cut these into two inch squares. Okay, so just get a little spatula like this. And sometimes the first ones are not so easy to get out. And then you're just going to place them on your drying rack. Just like that. Ooh, yummy, they look so good. Mmm. Yon hoggle, everybody. Okay, our Danish inspiration for our Scandinavian inspired Christmas. I hope you enjoyed making these with me today. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section. And uh, happy cooking, everybody. Mmm, yummy.